Howdy folks, welcome to 20th Century Adventures. I'm Nathan Logston, and uh, today I'm gonna do another product review. I know I keep saying that product reviews are not something that we do here, but you guys like them, and I'm trying to give you what you need, and hopefully it helps new reenactors kind of figure out what they need to get and what they should buy. So um, today we're gonna talk about What Price Glory. They're one of my favorite suppliers. Uh, they are a military supplier, so they focus primarily on World War One and World War II. Uh, they also do some other things, uh, Spanish-American War, and uh, I think they do some later stuff as well. So um, primarily we're going to be looking at the Spanish-American War stuff and the World War I stuff. So uh, military surplus existed. Uh, it was used following the American Civil War. Uh, we start to see surplus military goods being used by civilians in a civilian camping, hunting, fishing uh, lifestyle. So before that, you really don't see military surplus being used that way. Uh, but after the Civil War, you do. And so uh, even as late as 1923 in motor camping on Western trails, the author talks about using a military gum blanket or army gum blanket. I forget exactly how he words it, but uh, you can tell that's what he's talking about. Uh, it's in the inventory of things that they took and he recommends using as a ground cloth. Um, that's, that's the rubberized uh, tarp that was issued to soldiers during the Civil War and during the Indian Wars and also during the Spanish-American War. So there were a lot of these available and they were cheap and you used them. Um, we also see some clothing, probably not as much as what I'm wearing right now. This is probably overkill, um, but we do see photographs from the period where uh, somebody's wearing, say, the campaign hat or uh, breeches were really common. And then the civilian breeches look exactly the same, too. Uh, so it's hard to tell the difference in a black and white photo whether they're wearing military breeches or they're wearing civilian breeches. Uh, so you can really get away with those as a, a, in a full civilian outfit. It's going to look the same. Um, so... Uh, if you really want to get into the ins and outs of uh, surplus clothing, uh, Sarge Vining here on YouTube, uh, his channel, he talks a lot about military surplus and how and when it should be used, when it was released, when it would be available. Uh, so he is definitely the guru when it comes to surplus military stuff. Uh, so if you want to incorporate surplus, I recommend you do a lot of research. Uh, watch his videos too and try to figure out kind of what would be available in your time period. Obviously, you wouldn't want to wear uh, World War I surplus stuff, uh, you know, early in the 20s. Uh, some of it was released right away, but a lot of it was held till as late as 27. Uh, so it might be that you would do more of a 30s impression with your World War I stuff. However, we also see where soldiers just brought their uniforms home and used the pieces that were practical to use. Um, they didn't wear their their uh, stripes in the the local saloon, but uh, you know they would use the the raincoat and the hat and putties. Uh, a lot of those were used in in daily life afterwards, uh, and that's why those items as original pieces are more rare because they were used up after the war. Um, so those things you can incorporate uh, real easily. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about what price glory in particular. Uh, now, I'm not wearing their hat or their shoes. These are these are my shoes from Logs and Co. Um, but I, everything else came from them. Uh, so this is the M1883 uh, Blue Army undershirt. Uh, it's it's wool. It's a very thin, lightweight wool. Uh, it's really I'm standing here, it's 90 degrees, and it's humid, and it's raining, um, and I'm not any hotter in this than I was a little while ago in a cotton shirt. Uh, so it's really quite comfortable. It's a good summer weight wool. Um, it is a 19th century cut, so uh, the, the fit's a little different than what you would expect from a modern shirt, and it's a pullover style, so you know you gotta be able to get your hands over your head to put the shirt on. Um, but uh, otherwise, you know, it's, it's extremely comfortable. Uh, the wool is not itchy at all. Uh, it's very comfortable. Uh, the only drawbacks that I've found to this shirt is uh, when it arrived, it fit me with a little bit of room and bulk. And uh, it was like almost on the border of being too big. 
but, but about right. I was happy with it. Um, and then I washed it in cold water and hung it out on the line to dry, which is what I do with all of my wool garments that I sweat in. Um, after that, it shrank considerably. And I don't know if it was the agitation of washing, even though it was hand washed and in cold water, uh, or if it was hanging out on the line and maybe the sun warmed it up too much, I don't know. Uh, but it shrank a lot and now it's almost too small, um, which really is kind of a, a narrow fraction when it's either too big or too small. Um, so it's still in the range of just right, uh, especially once I get it on, but it's a little harder to get on now than it, than it was before. Uh, but it doesn't feel as bulky as it did before, so that's good. Um, anyway, it's something to be aware of. Uh, you know, if you're a, a girthier sort of guy, you might want to order a size above what you would normally wear, uh, just so that you've got some room for that shrinkage. Um, the only other thing is it's got plastic buttons on it, uh, which I don't care for at all. Uh, and of course that's easy to change. I just haven't gotten around to doing it. I need to buy some good bone buttons or something to put on here. I think I'd be happier with that. Um, otherwise it's a fantastic shirt. I love it. Uh, real nice. So. The next thing down here is I'm wearing the um, M1912 uh, summer cotton breeches. Uh, these are really well made. Uh, I ordered my size. Now remember that your my belly button's right here, okay? Our waist in this period is across the belly button. It's not on the hips like it is nowadays. You know, you, you might wear a certain size of jeans, and if you order that size in these, it's going to be too small because this is narrower than this is, at least if you're like most of us. <laughs> Got that dad bod going. Um, so measure around your waist and order that size. Um, so that's what I did, and these fit perfectly. They are just spot on, real comfortable, fit great. They've got uh, two front pockets. They have no pockets in the back. Uh, it does have a little buckle across the back. Um, it has a watch pocket right there. Um, belt loops and it also has suspender buttons so uh, you can you can wear it either way um, very comfortable and they also offer this this is the I think the olive color uh, they also offer a similar pair I think they might be an earlier pair maybe a, a 1902 pair in cotton uh, that is khaki color it's like a, a soft tan um, either one of those are appropriate uh, for civilian use because civilian market was producing the exact same pants. Sometimes they had uh, pockets in the butt is the only difference that I've seen between civilian and military breeches. So you can use these. They will be just fine for doing a full full on civilian impression. Um, the next product, this is something new that they just launched. Uh, this is the um, private purchase officers gaiters. Uh, up through World War I, um, officers could still purchase their own goods uh, that were military in style, but a little nicer, better made, maybe a little fancier, uh, and, uh, and that, was, that was commonly done. So that's what these are based off of, and, and there could be all kinds of variation in this, and even a civilian could go to the same maker that the military officer went to and say, I want that. Uh, for myself and, and the person would make it uh, because their job is just to make whatever's ordered and uh, whether it's a military officer or if it's uh, a civilian. So as a civilian you can wear these. These are great. Uh, I was really excited about these and I ordered them as soon as I saw them on uh, the website and um, the only drawback is that they are way too big and I did measure my size for these. Uh, I can fit three fingers almost between the end of this and my calf. Um, so I'm not sure what went wrong there, whether they sent me the wrong size or if um, they're just not true to measurements because I've never had this problem before with anything I've ordered from What Price Glory. So I'm gonna give them another chance. Uh, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna order the smallest size because there's a lot of adjustment on this. I have this cranked all the way down and it's still too big. Um, but there's three holes in all of these latches and there's quite a few on the the bottom strap uh, so it looks like I could order the smallest size and still adjust up if it's too small uh, so that's what I'm gonna do and if you order these that's what I recommend is is order them a little small 
uh, because they seem to be big. Um, so I want to also talk about some of the other products I have that, that they've made. Um, this is exactly the same thing as the uh, 1912 uh, cotton breeches that I'm wearing now. These are just the wool winter breeches. Um, really pleased with these. It's a nice heavy duty wool. Uh, it is a little coarse, so it's a little itchy against the skin on the legs, um, but they're extremely warm. Uh, great for winter hunting and, and uh, winter camping. Uh, I wear these all the time. Sometimes even when I'm not reenacting, I just wear them around the farm in the winter because they're so warm and comfortable. Uh, we had a, a period earlier this year where it got super cold and it was down single digits for days and um, and I wore these uh, to do all my farm tours in because they were so nice and warm. Uh, so definitely really like these um, uh, and they have all the same features, the watch pocket and everything as the cotton ones. Um, this is another excellent product. These are the uh, 1919 dungaree jeans. Um, really pleased with the the construction of these it's a little bit of a lightweight uh denim um it's not real heavy duty but it's well stitched uh and i think it would hold up just fine and it's great for summertime use because it's lightweight cotton um now as a military surplus item this would be um you know a much later item it wouldn't become available until the 30s um but uh it's exactly the same as civilian jeans at the time. Uh, all the cuts and everything are, are almost identical. So uh, you could definitely get away with wearing these earlier as a civilian um, and just not tell anybody that they're the military cut. And there's really no difference. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about these is that the legs are really, really wide. Um, so it kind of gives you a late 20s uh, to early 30s look, uh, even into the 40s, they still wore, you know, kind of that baggier look. And uh, they, they do kind of resemble that more. Um, but the extra room also makes them very, very comfortable and cool in hot weather. Um, so I, I think I'll put these on instead of wearing all this because <laughs> I'm starting to get warm. Um, then the last product here, and this is something that I think everybody should carry in their kit. Uh, whether you're camping or motor camping or just going on an auto tour um, is a raincoat. It, you never know when it's going to rain and keeping the water off of your clothing is vital um, because it's really, especially if it rains, happens to rain for days or the humidity's high, you can't dry those things back out real easily, uh, especially if you can't get a fire going or something. So um, Having a raincoat can make a big difference, especially if you're on an auto tour and maybe you got side curtains and a top, but the car breaks down and you've got to do work under the hood while it's raining. Raincoat's going to save your butt. So, um, and historically, this is something that would have been readily available as a surplus item and something that people would have bought as surplus. So it's a lot cheaper to buy a surplus raincoat for something that you may use a few times a year uh, as opposed to buying an expensive one, especially if you're going motoring and you're looking at the possibility of being knee deep in mud, uh, you wouldn't want to ruin a nice expensive raincoat. Uh, you can get one of these military surplus ones and, and it's going to be great. Uh, I think this is the 1908 uh, cavalry raincoat and uh, it's just really fantastic. Um, it's built exactly like the originals. It's got vents under the arms. Uh, the seams are all galvanized, uh, or vulcanized rather, um, so it's real vulcanized rubber. It's, it's really well done. Um, I love the, the weight and the weave. It's a very tight weave, uh, great fabric, uh, and then it fits really nice. Um, it's bulky. There's a lot of room under it, which is what you want in a raincoat because these are not insulated in any way, shape, or form, and rubberized fabric is very cold. And as soon as that rain gets on you, you may stay dry, but you're still going to be cold. You're still going to get the cold effect of the rain. Um, so you want to wear your jacket underneath of it or something for that extra insulation and extra warmth. And this is big enough to go over a jacket. This is the smallest size they carry. 
Uh, I've got a 41 inch chest, so um, they are oversized. Um, but again, that's good. Uh, it's got snaps down here uh, so that you can bring that in a little bit, bring that close. You would wear your gloves and put this over it, snap it down um, to kind of cinch it around the gloves, keep water from backtracking up your sleeve. And, uh, and then it's got these clips. I love the details on this. They did this right. Um, so it overlaps. And you've got two sets of clips. You've got this wider one in case you need the extra room. Um, but you've also got these over here. And they just snap over like that. And uh, this was common on um, some civilian items too. I've seen this used in a variety of, of uh, situations. So these clips are totally correct. Uh, and you can even bring the collar up and you can button it across. Uh, it's got uh, a snap that comes across. Oh, I think I just broke something. I did that wrong. Um, and so that buttons up like so. If you've got a good broad hat, you won't get rain down in this part. Um, and then this clips over to the side here somewhere. There it is. And now I'm ready for more rain. Now this doesn't breathe real well. It's got some um, vents, like I said, under the arm. It's got these little rivet vents, um, but it's definitely toasty inside here. So, um, but if I stood out in the rain and it started to get me wet, uh, not that I would get wet, um, but I have stood in this coat in the rain and, uh, and my shoulders got cold. They weren't wet, uh, but they were definitely cold. So um, I recommend having a, uh, a raincoat in your gear and a sweater uh, or a jacket of some sort that you can wear under your raincoat for added insulation. Um, so anyway, those are the products that I have from Work Price Glory and uh, I've been really pleased with with their quality overall, um, aside from the few things that I mentioned, and that's just, you know, nobody can win everything. Um, overall, it seems like they really try hard, they do a good product, and their shipping is fast, and the customer service is great, uh, and um, you can even reach the owner on Facebook and chat with him if, if you have an issue. So uh, he, he reaches out nicely. Um, wonderful, wonderful service, and a uh, fantastic company. So. I hope this has been helpful to you. If it has, give us a like and subscribe. And happy camping. We'll see you down the road.